Tiffany, my name's Pastor Matt. It's good to see you all here. A couple brief announcements before we get going. Um, first off, uh, this morning during the service, we're going to have the installation of council members and recognition of council members uh, finishing terms. Uh, so that will be uh, it's listed as after the sermon, but I'm going to bump that to after the hymn of praise uh, as the deer. So we're gonna, just going to switch those two in the order. Uh, so we've got that going on this morning. And then I'm going to lift up to your attention the blood drive Tuesday, January 30th. Um, that is from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, please consider donating. I heard in the news that there is a real shortage of blood, um, and it is, it, it is really crucial. crucial. This is, this is life-saving. Uh, there, there's no replacement for it. So the only way that we have enough blood to help those who are in need of it uh, is for folks to donate. Um, uh, all those participating will be entered for a chance to win tickets to Super Bowl 58, um, February uh, 11th in Las Vegas. Package includes tickets, round trip airfare, hotel, and a $1,000 gift, gift card. Uh, so you can sign up in, on uh, the, the Narthex um, or online. Um, and if you've got any questions, just uh, ask Audrey. Uh, she'll be happy to answer any questions. Yep. So, for, 43 sign-ins we need. We need volunteers to check people in, uh, baked goods, uh, yeah, having, having something to eat after giving blood is very important to keep those sugar levels up. So, yep. Um, so we've got a spaghetti dinner January 27th. Uh, I'll be cooking, uh, and the strategic mission team will be hosting. Uh, that will be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, Proceeds uh, from the free will offering go to the Warminster Food Bank. So we got that going on. Uh, ping pong's happening. And Thursday night, Bible study finished our book on Bonhoeffer just this past Thursday. So we are on hiatus until after Easter. I think it's a week or two weeks. I don't know. The date will be in the newsletter. So, and we'll get it in the bulletin eventually too. We got time. But yeah, no Thursday night Bible study until after Easter. Um, so, um, any other announcements that need to be made? Okay. So, uh, prayers of intercession, I have Charles, Nancy, Rona, Fran, Sally, um, I've added Doug, uh, and uh, we have George uh, on the list. Any other names to add to the prayer list? Joanne. Joanne. And Ray. Any uh, Victoria? Did I see another hand? Amy. Randy. Michael. Roxy. Shannon. Ma. 
Tommy and Mama. Joe and Mary Ann. Already got them. We got 10. All right. Okay. Heather. Dave. Frank. Alice. Dan. All right, so the ones that come in online, I like it because we had the benefit of spelling. Awesome. Thank you. Any others? All right, then. Without further ado, please rise. Let us begin our worship service with the uh, confession and forgiveness found on the opening page of our bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, of word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. And Jesus, the reign of God, has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See how her, her steps were a little more nimble after I said that. <laughs> Come on forward. Good morning. How are you all doing? Awesome. Let me see my mic is on. Today, and our scripture lesson that we have that we'll be reading in just a couple moments, um, we hear about this boy named Eli. And he's just, he's just a young boy. And he lives in the temple. And Samuel, who's a priest in the temple, uh, looks after Eli. And he's kind of raising Eli almost like a son. And Eli's in the temple, and he's asleep, and it's the middle of the night, and he hears this voice go, Eli. And Eli goes, oh, oh, that must be Samuel. So he runs over to Samuel's room and he shakes Samuel and he says, here I am. And you called me. And Samuel goes, I didn't call you. Go back. Go back to bed. And so he goes back to the temple. He lays down and he's sleeping and he hears, Eli. And then he, oh, oh, that must be Samuel. He runs over to Samuel. Hey, Samuel, you called me. Here I am. No, I didn't call you. And this happens again. He goes back to sleep. He hears Eli. He gets back up. He goes to Samuel. Hey, Samuel, you called me. And then Samuel goes, ah, I know what's going on here. I'm not calling him. I know some of you may have thought maybe Samuel may have been playing a joke or a trick on him or something, but he wasn't doing that. He was asleep. Do you have any idea who may have been calling? You are absolutely right. God was calling Eli. And he's just a boy. Which goes to show that God can talk to any of us. And in fact, God communicates with us all the time. Now, you might not hear God call your name in the middle of the night, like Eli, or on the telephone, um, but God talks to us and lets us know by, in our heart, letting us know, well, maybe you should do this instead of that. Or, you know what? That person really needs to know that, that they're loved or that they're cared for, or maybe that person needs a friend, or reassuring us that it's going to be okay because you are loved very much by God, and that, uh, or, or through the loving people around us, the people who love us and care for us. So, and, and sometimes, it, you know, you can feel like kind of like that big, insignificant in the world, like, 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 you know, maybe you're not all that important, like there's all these other much bigger, more important things in the world, but that's not true. You are very, very important to God because God loves you very, very much. So, you know what? Keep your ears out for the ways that God might be calling you, okay? All right. Thank you for joining me.
first reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him, that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll now read responsibly from Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out. O oh Lord, you have known me. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your, Your works so are wonderful, and I, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the same. To count them all, my lifespan would seem to be like yours. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, 
but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant, meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were brought, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. There are... One of the things I love about the Bible is... Um, the dialogue, just the interpersonal interaction, um, and, and, and so many interactions between people, are, and, and with God, uh, well, especially with Jesus, are just so rich, uh, especially in the Gospel of John. I mean, and you've, got, you've got the woman at the well, you've got Nicodemus, the centurion, uh, these, these, these interactions some of them longer some of them a bit shorter like this one but there's just so much there it's it's juicy um and so we we have uh philip philip's called by jesus and uh, philip follows jesus and then he goes and he finds nathaniel and he says to nathaniel we have found a him about whom moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Now, as we find out, uh, Nathaniel um, uh, is without deceit. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, he says, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. So Nathaniel, he hears this, and he doesn't hold back. He isn't trying to be polite. You know, I, I, when I hear his voice, I, I hear some sarcasm. I hear, you know, he says, 
uh, it, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Um, what do you mean from Nazareth, from Joseph of Nazareth? And, uh, you know, he's bold face, right in your face. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip, to his credit, uh, doesn't try to get into an argument with Nathaniel. He doesn't try to say to Nathaniel, well, you know, he said this, Jesus said that, or Jesus has done this. He doesn't try to get into theology or some logical intellectual argument. Um, he basically says, hey, come see for yourself. Come and see. So, sidebar. Um, great evangelism uh, tip right there. You want to introduce somebody to the love of God, it's not through arguments, it's not through some intellectual mind game or anything like that, or, or, or fancy theology. Come and see. Like, they have to experience the love of God itself. Love your neighbor. Demonstrate the love of God. Introduce them to the love of God. Come and see. So there you go, Philip. Um, and so... They're approaching Jesus, and Jesus sees Nathanael in, in, in distance coming, and um, Jesus knows who Nathanael is. After all, he's the son of God. And I have to imagine that as Nathanael was walking close, closer and saw Jesus, that he saw the look on Jesus' face and that it made him a, a little bit uncomfortable maybe um, because Jesus already knew him Jesus you know as we hear in our psalm uh, God knows us before we're, we're even born as as our, our limbs are being knitted in the womb God knows who we are God knows our days ahead of us uh, Jesus is privy to this stuff Jesus knows Nathaniel I have to imagine that it was it must have been for Nathaniel a little bit like what I experienced uh, as we resumed in-person worship after the uh, after um, uh, worshiping only online in person. And as the months went by worshiping in person, some folks who are members of the church now were coming to worship, and I was meeting them for the first time. And I remember going up to some of our members and saying, hey, I'm Pastor Matt. And, you know, they look at me like, like long-lost friends, and I have no idea who they are. And it's like, hey, Pastor Matt, how are you doing? Like we just talked yesterday. But for them, it wasn't just yesterday. It was last week because they've been worshiping online for quite a while. And they're talking to me like they know me very well. And in fact, they do, but I don't know them at all. I've only just met them. And, it, 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 and, and they actually caught themselves, and they're like, oh, pastor doesn't know us. <laughs> um, that it, it was for a moment there. And I have to imagine that it was the same for Nathaniel. Here's Jesus by his facial expression, by his body language, he must have sensed, does he know me? Maybe the thought wasn't there quite yet, but, you know, just, just kind of an emotional read, huh? And then Jesus says, as if Jesus had always known Nathaniel, greets him, not, not in a formal, hello, we're just meeting, my name's Jesus, you must be a Nathaniel, or, oh, what's your name? No, Jesus skips past introductions. Jesus skips past names as though he knows Nathaniel, as he does, and goes straight to, like, you know, what good friends might say to each other, kind of like a subtle, loving jab. Um, I mean, that's how I hear it. Uh, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, with kind of a, you, you know, a, a, a Cheshire cat grin on his face. Like he knows Nathaniel. He appreciates Nathaniel. He knows about Nathaniel. He knows he's an Israelite without deceit. He hits the nail on the head. 
And imagine if you're Nathaniel. Here's this person. They're looking at him like, like, like he must know me or something or just feels kind of odd. And then he greets me. He doesn't even call me by name and just says, oh, here's a, well, how do you know that about me? What makes him think he can be so familiar with me? Where did you get to know me? Huh? Who do you think you are? Where did you get to know me? Again, Nathaniel, without deceit, he just puts it out there. You obviously know me, or you think you know me. Where did you get to know me? Huh? And here's the kicker. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. It's a simple enough sentence. But it's loaded. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Like the fig tree is way over there. How could he possibly see me? He saw me before Philip. It means he knew I was there at the fig tree before Philip came. How did he know this? And the kicker. Did he hear what I said about Nazareth, his home? Jesus doesn't say it. But again, I see Jesus with that, with that same grin. A loving grin. A loving grin ago that's saying, yeah, yeah, Nathaniel, you know, man after my heart, Israelite without deceit. But yeah, I know exactly what you said. Uh huh. And Nathaniel says, You are the son, rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and angels. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Nathaniel, you will see greater things than these. Imagine. Imagine if, if Nathaniel really stuck to his his opinions that he's so honest about. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip goes, well, come and see. Well, Philip, thank you for the invitation. But again, like I said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm not going to waste my time. I'm quite happy being underneath the fig tree. You go on ahead. You will see greater things than these. You will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. No, no, Nathaniel, you won't. After all, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he'd miss out. Or what if Nathaniel approaches Jesus and Jesus has that grin on his face as I, as I picture him? And you know, just calls out to him as if he's known him, like, like, like Jesus talked to him just yesterday, like a buddy. Here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel hears that and sees the look on his face and says, maybe when he says, where did you get to know me, it's, less of a, a question and more of a challenge. Who do you think you are? 
What if the fact is this, this knowing that Jesus has, this, this calling out that, that hits really close to home, that he really hits the nail on the head. Like, he re- who would simply know that or guess that and have the, 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 the uh, uh, courage to just say it out with such certainty? Ah, you're without deceit. What if Nathaniel gets defensive? And then when Jesus says, I saw you underneath the fig tree before Philip came, that just, wow. Wow, what kind of trick is this? Did you have somebody spying on me? Or maybe way deep down, he's in awe of Jesus, but it's a little too close to home. And he gets even more defensive. Well, what, does this guy think he's a prophet or something? I'll prove him wrong. And he starts watching Jesus' words and trying to find ways to trap Jesus, to kind of prove him wrong, to bring him down a notch. I mean, after all, how many people interact with Jesus throughout the Gospels? And, and, and think of him as something or someone other than the Messiah as the Son of God who try to trap him, try to bring him down a notch. You will see greater things than these, Nathaniel. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Well, I guess not, Nathaniel. You're going to miss out. How often do we miss out? God is in our midst all the time, all around us, in big things and in small things. And how often do we miss out by how we prejudge, judge in advance? How often do we walk out the door and and not notice the splendor of God's creation? Because we've prejudged it because we've already seen it. We don't have to look again. There's wonders in this world I can look at over and over and over again. When I really look, I never, I never cease to be amazed. And there's days I don't look. Because yes, I've seen it before. I'm busy. Sometimes too busy. How we prejudge. How we prejudge each other. We are all created in the image of God. Every one of us, even if you're not a Christian, you're a human being. You're created in the image of God. You are. And everybody else, how often in prejudging those around us, we fail to see the image of God in them. And we miss out. How often do we miss out because we get defensive? Because we're overwhelmed? Because something is beyond our understanding? Or seems too good to be true? Or goes against our preconceived notions? Or we just get scared and want to protect ourselves from that which is unknown? or makes us a little uncomfortable. And we miss out. Fortunately for Nathaniel, he's an Israelite without deceit. Not only is he out without deceit to others, he simply tells it like he sees it, Fortunately for him, he's without deceit when it comes to himself. That when Jesus greets him and knows and, and, and 
recognizes Nathaniel as though he has known Nathaniel his entire life, which in a way he has. Nathaniel is honest enough. He's without deceit enough with himself to say, hey, there's something here. He knew, he knows me. How could he know this fact about me? That when he says, where did you get to know me? I hear it as part challenge, but I hear genuine curiosity there. He really does want to know. And when Jesus gives him the answer, he's able to see in it God. That the rabbi, the and calls him rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. We're honest with ourselves to have, he's honest enough with himself to have his preconceived notions challenged that maybe something good actually can come out of Nazareth. So in this season of Epiphany, I encourage you to look around See God being revealed to you. Because God is everywhere in little things and in large things. And there's lots of reasons why we may not notice. But one of them is when we're not honest with ourselves. When we let our fears or our prejudices get the best of us. Okay, now it's commercial time. <laughs> so, um, in the season of Lent, we will be doing a church-wide uh, Bible study on the book of Acts. And the book of Acts is really about the acts of the Holy Spirit happening all over the place. And the purpose of doing this Bible study is to open our eyes, to kind of strengthen our God antennae, our God dar, our sensing of God. Um, and so today's sermon plays right into that, um, being able to actually recognize God in front of us uh, and not letting our, pre our, our fears and prejudices get in the way of that. You can put that to practice and get further training, so to say, in that by doing the Book of Acts Bible study. Kind of open your eyes to the ways that God is active around us. Uh, so that will be going on during the season of Lent. We'll be doing it at the uh, uh, Thursday night midweek Lenten service. We'll be doing the Bible study. It'll be here Sunday morning led by uh, George Hen uh, Henry. It will happen um, uh, there'll be n numerous formats that you can do it. You can even do it on your own, uh, but we want to get everybody involved. And if you're interested in hearing more, come to the spaghetti dinner and the strategic mission team will uh, let, uh, teach you more about it, tell you more about it. Amen.
like to call forth, you may be seated, I'd like to call forth all those uh, who will be serving on council uh, for 2024. Um, as I read your name, uh, please come forth. Uh, Catherine Detra, John Flint, Cindy Fry, George Henry, Jennifer McQuiggan, Gail Oynes, Lynn Rocco Grande, Mike Sittler, Gary Zimmerman. following persons have been elected by this congregation to positions of leadership on church council. In baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death, made you members of the church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in faith. I ask you, together with all who are gathered here, to confess the faith of the church the faith in which we baptize. Let us profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform services, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the word and deeds of this household of faith reflect God in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith and love to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. You commit yourself to these things. Reply with the words, yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, reply with the words, yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. God bless you with his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Yay. Thank you for your willingness to serve. And at this time, I'd like to take a moment to give recognition 
of those who are uh, completing terms on council. Um, we have, uh, if you would come forward, if you're present, uh, Tony Griska, Nancy Hill, and Nancy Slight. It's just you, Tony. <laughs> All right, Tony, thank you for your service on church council and on the finance team. Um, and as all of you know, Tony is w one of our members uh, who does so many different things over the years, um, involved in so many aspects of the life of the congregation. Uh, so um, I've got a gift for you, Tony. In recognition of your service. Thank you, Tony. The others, they might not be here for many reasons. One of them might be uh, not wanting to be dragged forward in front of everyone. My plan is to leave those gifts of recognition, and I did include one more for one more in individual, Rona, who does so much. Uh, she stepped out, down from council last year. Um, so I'm just going to leave them there. And when they show up for worship, guess what? Uh, if they're worshiping online, well, we might have to deliver it to home if necessary. <laughs> Thank you to all of you who will be serving on council this year and all of you who have served on council. continue with the prayers of intercession. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth, let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. The light in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. <clears throat> Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplifts those on the margins of society. We pray for peace in the Middle East and Ukraine. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You know who our inner hearts be present with any who are oppressed. Victims of racism or cultural bias and all who long for respite or restoration. Especially Charles, Nancy, Rona, Fran, Sally, Doug, George, Joanne, Ray, Victoria, Amy, those mourning Randy, Michael, Matthew, Roxy, Shannon, Mama and Mommy, Joe, Mary Ann, R.C., Julie, Melissa, Heather, Jan, Dave, Frank, Alice, Carol, and Dan. And those we say out loud or in our hearts. God of grace. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. God of unity, make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. 
trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth. We remember all who have died and, and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. If you had not done so before the service, you may do so afterwards, and that is leave an offering, uh, either in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary next to the baptismal font, uh, or uh, there's a link on the, uh, in the online bulletin, uh, as well as a uh, link for giving on the church website. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. body of Christ given for you. The 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 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed for you. And now those communing uh, online or in the pew with a self-serve communion kit. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Christ, you are God's beloved. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.